Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to talk about a topic that comes up often, and it's a good topic. I had the same thought myself, and that is, uh, why don't we just skip all these smaller blowers, and let's jump straight to the 4-liter Whipple that uh, that Whipple makes, okay? Big 4-liter crusher. Okay, there's a few reasons that you really don't want to do that, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so the very first thing that comes to mind for me is how is that big blower going to fit under the hood? I like the stock appearance of the car, and uh, so this might not be too big of a concern for others, but for me, I want to keep the stock Terminator hood. And so if you look at this uh, blower that's on there, it's the 2-3 Whipple. It's a little bit smaller. Okay, uh, it actually fits perfectly under the hood with a four liter Whipple. Okay, the blower is so big, and you have to run such a large upper pulley uh, that it's not going to clear the stock hood. And so, I'm definitely not cutting holes or notching my factory hood just to make the blower pulley fit. Okay, we'll talk about pulley size here in a minute, but uh, keeping to the fitment issues, you're going to have to go to different motor mounts, maybe even a different K member, all kinds of things just to get that to sit low enough. And uh, in the end, you will need to be running that 3.5 inch upper, maybe even a four inch upper to get the car tuned. So plan on those modifications minimum and even a cowl hood perhaps. So you say, okay, well, that's easy. I'll just change to a smaller upper pulley, right? Well, that's not going to work because on the 4-liter Whipple with the stock lower um, in a 3.5-inch upper, you're already going to be at 28 PSI. You do not want to spin the blower any faster. Here's a simulation from NGK showing pre-ignition or detonation. Okay, so what this is showing is regular fuel. If it's pushed past its limits, it will ignite before... Uh, the spark plug uh, goes off, as you can see. And so that's enough force to bend rods. And usually on the Terminator, it won't bend the rod, but it will take chunks out of the top of the piston. And you got blow-by oil, and you need a whole engine rebuild. So again, you're going to need to be on race fuel, E85, big fuel system. What's the point of trying to make the upper uh, supercharger pulley bigger just to limit the blower so that you don't have too much PSI? It's counterproductive. So your only other option is to change the lower crankshaft pulley to be smaller. And so you want that pulley to now be smaller to slow the supercharger down. And by doing that, you're going to go to an aftermarket one that most likely does not have the stock cage that goes around it. So this video comes from my crank pulley removal video, and I'll put the link to that in the video description. As you may know, the lower crank pulley is reverse thread, so you're turning it clockwise to remove it. And uh, this is a good demonstration to show you what it looks like as you unthread this. Okay, that's your lower crank pulley, and you can see the cage on the back side of this. And that's supporting, that's helping support the crankshaft through all this. And so being that the supercharger belt is outer, it's the farthest out belt, that puts a lot of stress on the nose of that crankshaft with that much pressure as you're spinning it. This guy, look how many of these he went through. Even the stock supported lower crank pulleys on a 2.9 Whipple, okay, he was even destroying the threads. So you could imagine how much more force is required on a 4 liter Whipple. Okay, so once again, you want to keep that caged system that's helping support the crankshaft so that you don't snap the snout of it. And so now I'm going to show you an actual 0304 Cobra crankshaft and what I'm talking about uh, with the snout. Okay, so here's the forged crankshaft out of a 2003 Cobra, 8 bolt, okay. Now, if you look at the very nose of it, this is the keyway. So the oil pump gear is right on this, the uh, inner crankshaft pulley rides on that, which the outer pulley is connected to. And so it's all riding on that little keyway. So as the crankshaft spins, you can um, imagine this is a, a upper pulley, but imagine the the bigger lower pulley, as it spins, it's all uh, relying on that keyway to spin everything. So when you get a huge blower up top and you have a lot of pressure that's spinning right here on the crankshaft, you can snap the snout. And some people will go to a double keyway. And so here's a picture of a double keyed crankshaft from an 0304 Cobra that was for sale. You can see the two keyways on there. And that's gonna require modifying all the other parts too to accept a double keyway. And there's even controversy on that because if you look at that second keyway that's added, they had to notch it 
just to add the keyway. So there's thoughts that it might not even be very strong because you're compromising some of the integrity of it by cutting into it. Um, that's something major that you want to keep in mind is how much force it's taking to spin that blower with the snout of the crankshaft. Now the crankshaft itself is, is strong enough and you're making so much power to turn in this thing. But if you have it all riding up here on the snout, uh, the, the strength of that crankshaft will snap the snout. So the case in point is the newer blowers are so efficient, like the TVS 2.65, the Whipple uh, Gen 5 3 liter, even the older TVS 2.3, that uh, it's going to be more blower than the car is ever going to really need. You're going to be able to pull it down. You're going to be able to run regular uh, pump gas or race fuel or whatever you need, and you're going to be getting to the higher horsepower limits that you're going to want. My brother's car is making 650 at the tire. This car is making 600 at the tire. And that's about uh, the max that you're going to want to be at with regular pump gas. Okay. And you got to think about traction. If it's street driven, I have Mickey Thompson ET streets. I've aired them down to 25 PSI. And at 600 horsepower at the tire, it's a perfect combination. It hooks any more than that, and you're going to start having traction issues. And so you got to think about what's the use of the car. Uh, are you going to be putting a bigger slick on it at the track, uh, or do you want it to hook on the street? Uh, you can imagine what would have happened. I'm going to show you a quick uh, clip over here. If my car was making a lot more power, um, what would have happened? The car hooked perfectly as it was. Okay, so again, let's talk about uh, the fuel limits that you have. We were already talking. You're going to have to pull um, <laughs> you're going to have to pull you up on the top, get a bigger upper, or go to a smaller lower, um, just so that uh, your tuner is going to be able to tune the car for the street. Unless you're on a strict race gas or E85 or something along those lines. Now, even with that PSI level being too much for the fuel, if you overcome that, now you're gonna have too much PSI for the heads. You're gonna have to basically go to head studs. And uh, you know, as you read the description, either even for some of the bigger TVS, like the Gen uh, 3R uh, for the 265, they're talking about uh, having to have a built engine for that. And that's why, yeah, the Terminator engine comes built with forged internal and everything, but there's other things that you're going to have to do, like the head studs, um, just to keep the engine together at that uh, PSI level, assuming that you have the fuel and everything you need to keep away from pre-ignition. So yes, you can change pulley combinations, you can deal with belt slip, you can deal with tensioner problems, alignment problems, okay, there's just so much that you, that you don't need to deal with anymore by going to the more efficient, smaller blowers that are now out. Okay, if you're starting at 28 PSI with a 3.5 inch upper and a stock lower, you're going to have to go to headers and cams and all kinds of things just to bring the PSI level down so that it's tunable uh, for regular fuel. And even with headers and heads and cams, you're probably only going to bring it down from 28 to about 25 PSI, which is still going to be very difficult to tune with. That's too much boost for uh, regular pump gas. Um, <laughs> one thing I found was funny. I, I came across uh, somebody who had already been down this route and he had gone turbo in the end and he had a lot of experience. And so what I'm going to actually do is just read that post um, because it basically summarizes all this. And I thought it was pretty funny. He's kind of getting after the person who had just bought a Whipple without, uh, ex without doing research. Uh, he bought a four liter Whipple, that is. So he said... Uh, if you did your research beforehand, you wouldn't have spent all that money. We're just giving you our advice. Read up on how many people moved, uh, removed their 4.0 liter Whipple, including hardcore guys that street race and are at the track all the time. If you want big power, you need a turbo auto setup. If a 2.9 Whipple, 2.8 Kenny Bell Mammoth, 2.3 TVS aren't good enough and you want more, then you need a turbo. My shop doesn't even recommend 3.4 Whipples anymore. They built Snakebite. I even spoke uh, to other guys on here 
who work at other shops across the states, and they don't even recommend these blowers. Most will say, after a 2.9 Whipple, go turbo. All these big blowers need to be run with a high boost E85. Uh, the 3.4 Whipple even runs hot. The 4 liter Whipple, even hotter. When you read the uh, read the internet, nobody tells you the horror stories of these setups. It looks good on paper. Without tons of boost or a properly built motor, that uh, instant hit, you're not going to get it. My rule of thumb for twin screw is 18 to 19 pounds on pump gas to make them run right. Uh, these are with the 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 liter blowers. Uh, can you get away with it with a 2.8H Kenny Bell? Sure. The Mammoth, waste of time. 2.8 and higher, I go straight to 20 uh, plus pounds E85 or race gas. And then you get that violent hit. The car will run hard. My 2.9 is set at 23 pounds. I will not run it any lower. So anyway, there you go from somebody who even has more uh, experience than I do on swapping on all the different blower setups that they've had. Uh, they'll tell it to you that way. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, my thought on the bigger blowers. And uh, definitely, if you have your car completely built for it, it might be a great thing for you, but uh, you're more likely... In my opinion, once you get past the 2.65 TVS or the 3 liter Whipple Gen 5, go turbo if you want more power than that. But uh, anyway, that's my opinion on it. And let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you're already following the channel, please make sure the notification bell's on for uh, updates on the newest videos. Thanks for watching.